Today on Wood Turning, we're going to make a knot hole. Really? Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Easy Wood Tools. Best in class carbide wood turning tools. Hi, Roger. <laughs> long story short, uh, a long time ago I harvested a knot hole off a tree and I put it on the fence and my wife loved it because she made it into a bird feeder. That is all that's left of it. After a little bit of rain and rotting, it's all gone. It was a really popular thing. The birds loved it and so did a few other neighbors. <laughs> but today, I'm going to make a knot hole out of a piece of wood I harvested at my sister's house. So this is a piece of crotch wood I salvaged from that tree at my sister's yard and you can see the beautiful figure in it and stuff. This I'm going to make a platter out of later. Now over here, this one's got a really bad crack in it, some really stupid chainsaw work. I guess that might have been me. <laughs> but it's just an odd shape and it's too thin to make a platter out of there. But I got to look at it this here now that these are great features. If I can do something to use those features, it will be incredible. So why not? hollow it out and make it into a knot hole. So we're going to turn a hole somewhere in here. We're doing this by the seat of our pants today. We'll see how it goes. So the first thing I got to figure out is how I'm going to put this on the lathe. So right now I'm trying to find the balance, <laughs> the center of this piece of wood because when we put it on the lathe, it's going to be so out of round because it's such an odd shape. Oh, there. It's such an odd shape that if I can find the center like that, let me get a Sharpie here. <laughs> so what I've done is now this is kind of balanced just about right. So I'll make a mark here, a mark here, a mark here. This will still be out around when we turn it, but at least this gives me the best chance of having it not walk the lathe across the floor. And this is a big lathe. That's hard to do. So I've got a little face plate we're going to use to hold this and Houston, we have a problem. My great chainsaw cutting <laughs> is making this crooked. So, what we're going to do, let me take my Sharpie here. We're going to mark this. And now we know where I need to remove some wood. And we're going to take my Proxen grinder, put on some face protection here. And I'm going to whittle away at this for a little bit and we'll make it flat. And that'll give us a nice, safe surface to attach the faceplate to. You can see we flattened it out really well. Now I'm putting in some heavy duty screws. They go in here, they have a nice aggressive thread on them, but they're also thick, not like drywall. Drywall will snap and break. <laughs> so I'm using an impact driver, which helps put it in and drive the screws deep into the wood. And it's like doing a tire. You just want to go from one side to the other. That way you distribute out the amount of pressure that you're putting on each side of the face plate. I don't know where I got this faceplate. I've had it for so long, but it is a massive one and it comes in really handy for projects like this. So another 10 screws or so, and we'll be ready to be on the lathe. <laughs> let's see, let's go for that one. So, <laughs> this thing's heavy. Got it threaded on the lathe. It looks pretty good. We're going to see how smoothly it rotates, how far out of balance it is. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. I'll be right back. Let's see if it worked. Before we get started and uh, maybe lose my life in this process, I want to thank our sponsors, Robust Lays and Easywood Tools, because without their support, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be able to do these videos. We wouldn't be able to do these videos. Huh, got me thinking about that. But anyway, I do thank them. I do appreciate it. This is what we're looking at now. 
We got a big honking thing coming out here. I call it a branch, I guess. I love that. This is a great look. And look at our balance. It's really pretty good. However, how do you reach inside of here and turn safely? I could use an EasyWood tool, but it's going to be a little bit sketchy reaching that far out. So I'm probably going to have to go with my hollowing system. But, so what I want to find out right now is where is my center here? Because we're going to turn this away. So there we go. So there's my center. So I want to drill a hole here so it'll help me when I start doing my hollowing. And that gives me an access point. I am using robust uh, box rest right here because that's going to help me reach out past this and stay safe. And it's also going to support the tools I go in. I'll adjust this a little bit, but I got to drill a hole there first. Okay, so I think this is the safest way to approach this, and this is my elbow two hollowing system. Nice little name there, huh? Um, I don't have the laser installed right now because we don't need it. We can see everything we're doing right here. So this is going to give me the safe reach to come out over here, keep my hands back. I'm using the box rest kind of for that. I've got this handle here. I've got the 3 sixteenths, 3 sixteenths inch tip in here, which is a smaller tip which is less aggressive. So I'm going to turn this on. We've got our speed set. We kind of worked our way up, but I'll do it, show you again. We can't go very fast. So this is probably about 50, 60 RPM. And I can feel the lathe wanting to rock a little bit. And this is like a whew, 700 something pound lathe. So it's solid. So anyway, we're just going to gently come in here and start making some cuts. We just want to nibble our way in, just little bitty cuts. Don't want to get in a hurry. What happens is, as you're going like this, the left side of the tool wants to engage. So that's why you just want to do like a quarter inch at a time on this. And since we're going through bark, it's a rough cut. But the hollowing system takes a lot of the pressure out. And most hollowing systems, they all do the same thing. I'm not pushing this one, I'm just talking about the functions of them. They keep you from having to hold a tool in your hand and with all those forces on there, this really helps. You see now I've got a little bit of a bite in there in the wood so it's a little smoother. And this is going to be just a slow slog to work this down, to hollow this out. And boy the birds should be really happy when I get done. So we're making some progress. This is hard stuff. <laughs> uh, but with this box rest, there's one thing I'm doing that I didn't mention that's really cool. This little pin here, when you're inside of a hollow vessel and you can't see inside, it keeps you from going off that side of the tool rest. But what's really cool, let me start this up, make sure everything doesn't hit. Okay. You use it as a fulcrum. So I come in here, push against that, and use it as leverage to make my cut. It's really nice. It gives you a lot of stability making the cut like this. And I just go in small increments like this. I can probably do about an inch, inch and a half wide swath before I have to move the tool rest. I'll just keep moving it this way as I go. So it's just a process of whittling away. One thing I like to say is hollowing is not a race. If you're in a hurry, you're going to get hurt. You just take your time and take off what the tool will allow you to take off with a gentle movement. And you can see from the way I'm holding the tool back here on this whole system here, it's very simple. I'm just using this as my other part of my fulcrum. So I come in here and I just move my hand and just by moving my hand that a little bit out, it moves that up there. And it's just really easy to control it. And like I said, this is very, very hard wood. And so this really takes a lot of the stress out of trying to turn something like that. Normally I'd be doing green wood, which would be a lot more fun. <laughs> I, hope, I hope the birds enjoy this. <laughs>
Okay, got a couple screws in here. Man, way too much wire, I think. <laughs> we'll cut off the excess. Wrap it around there, but I want to show you this, so that's gonna work. Here we go. <laughs> There's our bird feeder. <laughs> I think that's really, really cool. I took care to go in like this so we have room for the seed to sit there. And this is going to be great. We're going to have birds on this limb here and everything else. It really is neat. I don't think I'm going to put a finish on it. I'm just going to let it weather like it has over the last 100 years it's been a tree. And it should last 10, 15 years. And then I'll make another one. But right now, let's go feed the birds. Well, and that is how you make a knot hole bird feeder. <laughs> it's kind of a gray day, but I know those little suckers are hungry. They're going to be here pretty soon. So until the next time on wood turning, keep turning. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Easy Wood Tools. Best in class carbide wood turning tools.